shakers and tambourines, plastics, I love tambourines, double row, single row, steel jingle, brass, minor tambourine, grip, skin on it, extra loud, medium, stage shaker, sounds like the ocean, RE20, some rattlesnakes going on. What's up everybody, welcome to part six of the music production tutorial series where I show you how to make music and break it down for you track by track, instrument by instrument. Today we're going to be doing hand percussion. Hand percussion can add a lot to your track. There are many different types and flavors of hand percussion from djembes to bongos to triangle to cowbell, wind chimes. Today we're going to be focusing primarily on shakers and tambourines because these are the two most commonly used uh, types of hand percussion. In my opinion these are the types of hand percussion that can add the most to a track. They're pretty cheap as well hand percussion can really add a lot to a track. If you don't believe me, go back and listen to your favorite songs. Listen to Beatles songs, listen to Stevie Wonder, listen to the most popular music of the day. Listen to Motown. They had one guy whose only job in the whole world was to play the tambourine. It's that important. It can really add a huge difference to your track. It's a subtle difference, but that extra dynamic amount of energy, that extra push forward can really take a track to the next level and get the, the listener bump in their head and feel in the groove and really take the track and make it something special. Particularly with the approach that I use where I'm programming drums and so many drums nowadays are either loops or they're programmed, they're on a grid, they're perfect and exact. Adding an element of human performance and dynamic performance to your track can really add a lot. It's possible to just take a tambourine loop and press a button on a piano and have that be your tambourine. And take a shaker loop and do the same and have that be your shaker. I think the approach of taking programmed drums with human hand percussion really adds some spice to your track and that's why I take that approach. When it comes time to record hand percussion, we're going to be doing so, of course, on a microphone. And anytime you're recording on a microphone, the room matters a lot the treatment, the size of the room. If you want more explanation on that, go back and watch the previous videos in the series, how to record acoustic guitar, how to record bass guitar. I went over it at length in those videos. Once the room is aside, then it's the type of percussion. The most common tambourine that you're gonna find in any music store is this kind of cheap, kind of plastic, kind of, this one has a double uh, ring. They're okay, they have a grip. I just, I don't prefer these for recording. These are okay for jamming. And Playing tambourine is a lot harder than you'll expect if you haven't ever done so before. Just because you're a drummer doesn't mean you can play the tambourine, trust me. <laughs> For recording, I really prefer a wooden tambourine. Uh, tambourines, I love tambourines. As you can tell, I, I, like, I like different styles. Try them out on different songs. This song calls for this type, this song calls for that type. I just try them out. You can have double row or you can have single row. These have uh, steel jingles. The type of jingle, you wouldn't think it's a big difference, but it is quite a big difference. Uh, these have brass. It's a little more expensive, but it gives a higher end and more of a crispy kind of sound, which can be good for a lot of songs. I end up using this tambourine quite a bit. When you have a double row tambourine, the sound can sound a little out of control. It can sound a little bit much, which might be good for the track you're working on. The single rows give you more of a tight, controlled, nuanced kind of sound. These are minor tambourines. The one thing I wish that they did was include a grip. Like this one has a grip. I wish these had that. Here's a single row steel. Nice tight kind of uh, sound. Single row brass is going to be a little shinier sound. See the high end? Here's a double row steel. Tambourines are quite loud. You don't want to close mic them. This mic is a little too close. Here's a different double row steel. See how... It it has a little, even though they're both double row steel and they're both wood, they, they have a little bit of different vibes. This one uh, used to have duct tape. If you are low on budget and you want to turn a double row into single row, you can add duct tape on each one of these jingles and it will kind of clean up the sound. It makes it a little muted sounding, but I've, I've taken that off because I have the single rows. You can get them with a, a skin on it. These are a little fancier for somebody that's a little more professional. So this is like a drum head here. That's more for soul kind of music, R&B. This was in Motown, they use this kind of tambourine a lot. I love uh, Meinl for tambourines and for shakers too. I love it. I think they're made in Germany. 
Minel has a great tone and great durability with their shakers, tambourines, and other equipment. They make this line of egg shakers. I love shakers. With shakers, you can get away with plastic, but just make sure you get a lot of different types of shakers. It's good to have many different choices, many different flavors. Think of it like ice cream. You have 31 different flavors. You have the extra loud, loud, medium, soft. I like soft shakers on the track a lot. You might not notice a difference now, but on a track you notice a difference between shaker types. The bigger shakers, this one is metal. Uh, this is more of a stage shaker. It's very loud so that it cuts through in a mix. It can be used for a chord. I've used it on a track a couple times, but it can be a little intense and overpowering. If you have a heavy rock track, that can be a good thing. What I use as the medium is the great hand shaker. I love this one. This is my soft sounds like the ocean. Sounds like there's sand in there. I love it. I just love soft shakes. Make sure you have a variety of toys, tools on hand. Different tracks will have different applications for these type of percussion. For this track, I think I'm going to use my trusty single row brass. I'm going to use this shaker. A bit about mic technique. You can use an SM57, which I showed you last week that you use SM57 to record guitar amps. You can even use a condenser mic. But those are not the ideal microphone. I would recommend Electro Voice RE20 that I'm gonna use. Or if you even have more budget, I've heard that the best thing to use is a ribbon mic. It gives it a nice soft sound. Don't ever run phantom power through a ribbon mic. And if you want more tips like this, I have a free ebook for download. It's in the description. It shows you how to set up your home studio, exactly what gear to buy, how to do it on a budget, little tips and tricks for building a studio from scratch. Check that out in the description. When you're recording shaker, you want to close mic it, really. You don't want to stand too far back of the mic. There's kind of two ways to go about it. You can record dead on, which is a little more challenging. You have to be more precise and exact in your shakes or you can kind of come across the, the mic so you can kind of shake toward the sound is going this way so you can kind of that makes it a little easier um, I tend to do it like this way that's just how I do it when it comes to recording tambourine I'm not even gonna hit it in front of this mic this it's way too close and that's why the room really really matters for tambourine a lot more than it does for shaker recording tambourine is like recording a drum kit almost you got to really have a nice room that's treated and you got to stand back. I stand back about, I don't know, three to six feet from the mic. See if I come close on the mic, it's too much. The tambourine is a good gauge for the high frequency content of a track. So it kind of sets the bar for the highs in the, in the song. That's one of the reasons it can just be overwhelming if it's a close mic. You got to kind of get a room mic. Whatever room you're in, you know, just live with it. Try to get the room as dead as possible. Stand back from the mic. You really need treatment for, for recording tambourine. It's just, it's just how it is. With hand percussion, less is really more. Don't go crazy. Little touches here and there. You know, I'm not putting shaker on the whole track. I'm just putting it on like the B part or the chorus part. Tambourine, I'm not gonna, maybe I might put it on the verse. I might not put tambourine at all. I'm, I'm thinking this is how the recording works. You make the little decisions along the way creatively as you go. Let's turn the gain down for the tambourine because it's gonna probably be overwhelming. Turn the output game down. Enough of the talk, let's do some shaker tamarine tracks. I'll we'll do my attempt at percussion. It can be challenging. <laughs>
the bridge has a lot of electric guitars going on, so it's too heavy, so it just, it's too busy. I just put it on the four or whatever. I just put one beat per bar. It's gonna be enough. This is how we record. We'll just overdub. I don't do the whole track. I just do like one section and the next section. It's hard to get it started sometimes. Get some rattlesnakes going on. <laughs> I'm not the best tambourine player.